Just bought your first Mac? Worried you might be missing out on how best to use that shiny new computer? I can help. I remember when I first entered the world of the Mac, having been a Windows user for many, many years, it was both exciting and completely disorienting. User interface elements I'd come to know and love were replaced by completely different ways of making my way around an operating system. I had to learn new keyboard shortcuts. Everything just felt a bit alien. More frustratingly, I became one of those Mac owners who spent more time wondering what was coming next rather than enjoying my current Mac. If you've just entered the world of the Mac and you're experiencing similar feelings, this is entirely normal. Don't worry, we have all been there. So without further ado, here are 10 tips for new Mac owners based on nearly two decades of living in this world. Today's first tip is also a neat segue into today's awesome sponsor, MacPaw. If you come into the Mac after years of dealing with Windows machines that clog up over time and eventually grind to a halt in a fit of blue screens, I have some very good news. Macs don't get as dirty as Windows PCs. But that doesn't mean you won't have to give them a little fettle now and again. Large files still continue to build up without you knowing, and removing apps from Macs is more tricky than you might think. Also, and contrary to popular belief, Macs are susceptible to viruses and malware, which is why I always recommend a cleaning app like Clean My Mac X from MacPaw. That includes a dedicated malware removal tool, which is just fantastic, and the ability to remove those large hidden files I mentioned earlier. There's also a brilliant app uninstaller to completely get rid of those apps. And on that note, MacPaw has recently updated Clean My Mac X with a brilliant feature which helps you identify and remove suspicious apps from untrusted sources. Now these apps might threaten the safety of your Mac and your data, and you may not even know they're there. MacPaw is also doing a huge amount to support the people of its native country, the Ukraine, during this incredibly challenging time. So to find out more about what MacPaw is doing and also about Clean My Mac X, just click the link in my description. Now, new Macs come installed with a host of apps that you may not need. They take up space, they occasionally get in the way, and they will play zero role in your life. So, as nice as it is for Tim & Co to give us that stuff for free, I'd recommend getting shot of what you don't use. Thankfully, Apple provides a very useful list of the free apps that come with new Macs, which I'll put in the description, but I wouldn't take a sledgehammer approach with this, because some of those apps are tiny, some of them are really useful, but some of them you just don't need. The ones to look out for are GarageBand, iMovie, Keynote, which is their kind of version of PowerPoint, Numbers, which is their version of Excel, and Pages, which is a bit like Word. Now, there's nothing wrong with any of those apps, and they are actually fantastic if you use them. So, for example, if you want to try out music production, GarageBand is fantastic. If you want to do a bit of video editing without spending lots of money on Final Cut Pro, iMovie is brilliant. And there's nothing wrong with Pages and Numbers. But if you don't use those apps, get rid of them. And to do that, just go into Finder, Applications, and then drag the app in question into the bin. Simple. Tip number three is to get your password management figured out. Unfortunately, we do live in a world these days where people want your stuff, nasty people, and they've worked out one of the best ways to do, well, one of the easiest ways to do this is to break into our digital lives. They are horrible people, but it's also why we need password management. That's why I've created a guide for finding the best password manager, which I'll link to above. But if you want even more control and even more space for your most important stuff, 1Password is my personal recommendation. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also leave a link above to a recent video that I made about 1Password in terms of how I use it and what it means to me. Tip four is to stop looking at what's coming next. I've got some news for you. A new version of your Mac will inevitably arrive at some stage. It might be next week, it could be in a year's time, it could be in three years' time, but that's life. Apple is incredibly secretive about forthcoming product releases. It's an approach which has even spawned an industry in itself, which is this kind of Apple rumor mill. I write about it, I make videos about it, loads of other people do, and Apple fans and non-fans debate this stuff until they're blue in the face. But it all comes down to one simple fact, which is that no one outside of Apple's literal circle knows when the next version of your Mac is arriving, what it will be like, or even if it will arrive. I've fallen foul of this so many times myself. Just enjoy what you have. 
So it took me a while to realize the power of the macOS menu bar, but once I did, it completely changed the game for me. So if you're not aware, the macOS menu bar sits at the top of the screen and it's ever present. So it's always there no matter what app you're in. Even if you're in full screen, if you move your mouse to the top of the screen, the menu bar will come down. And the contents of that menu bar changes depends on what app you have open. The only stuff that remains consistent is the Apple logo on the far left and the collection of icons to the far right. The latter is where the magic lies and I've discovered a bunch of brilliant menu bar apps which make me more productive and which have completely changed the way I interact with my Mac. I'll put a link above to a video where I go into this in more detail. Tip six is to get yourself the must have Mac accessories. I get it, you've spent serious money on your Mac already. The last thing you wanna do is keep buying more stuff for it. That's completely fair, I completely understand, but there are a few must have Mac accessories that are really worth putting a few pennies to one side for. The first one is a decent case if you've got a MacBook. The second is a great keyboard slash mouse or trackpad combo if you're a Mac mini owner. The third is a USB hub if you're in need of more ports. And the fourth is a tech carry bag, which might sound a bit strange, but let me just go and get mine. This is my inner tech tech carry bag. And I bought it, I think late last year. And I can't believe I didn't have one before because it's so, so useful. It's basically a tiny bag with a couple of zips and loads of storage space inside. It's actually a bit TARDIS-like, there's so much room in here. So if I open it up, I've got things like my external SSD drives. I've got an iPad mini in here. I've got lots of different cables that I might need, battery pack, USB hub. Basically, everything I need to take my Mac on the road and get stuff done. So a tech carry bag is an absolute must have accessory. In fact, it's probably the most important accessory I've just mentioned. Tip number seven is to give Safari a try. The global browser usage stats suggest that you're probably a Chrome user. That's fine, I've got no problem with Chrome, it's a great browser. But if you're serious about making your way into the wonderful world of the Mac, I'd kindly ask that you at least give Safari a try. Now, Chrome fans will probably scoff at this, just ignore them. There are a couple of reasons I think Safari makes perfect sense on the Mac. The first is resource management. Chrome is notoriously bad when it comes to making effective and considerate use of your Mac's memory and system resources. It will chew up your RAM and chomp away your battery life like no one's business. Safari doesn't do this. Secondly, Safari is made by Apple, which means you get to enjoy all of the goodness they throw in with each update without any constraints. Top of the list of benefits is the wonderful way in which you can hand off open websites between Apple devices. So if you have a website open on your iPhone, for instance, you can very quickly share it with your Mac. You can also easily find websites that have been shared with you from people on iMessage and do things like share open tab groups. Safari really is worth a bit of your time. Tip eight is to turn off Hey. We discussed this recently on the eight or 16 podcast, which I'll link to in the description, but basically none of us could think of a reason to use Siri on the Mac. Introduced at WWDC in 2016, Siri for the Mac was given its own coveted space on the menu bar and a permanent slot on that stupid touch bar. But trust me, there is absolutely no reason to ask Siri to do anything on your Mac. You'll have your fingers resting on the keyboard or the trackpad, both of which give you access to everything you need to do in Mac OS. Trust me, you will never use Hey on the Mac, and it's just incredibly irritating to accidentally invoke when you don't mean to. So to turn it off, head into System Preferences, Siri, and uncheck Listen for Hey. Tip number nine is to brush up on keyboard shortcuts. So if you've been a Windows user for any amount of time, one of the first things you'll notice when you get your new Mac is that none of your favorite keyboard shortcuts work. You can obviously remap keyboard shortcuts in Mac OS, but I would advise against this. Remember, you're living in a new world now, and although it will feel a bit weird to begin with, it's a far better idea to learn the default Mac OS keyboard shortcuts for your most used functions. Now, admittedly, I'm not a heavy keyboard shortcuts user, but beyond the usual cut, copy, paste, I could not do without the keyboard shortcuts for spotlight, screen capture, and paste as plain text. They're just three that I use all of the time, but I'll leave a link in the description to a super helpful resource from Apple, which lists all of the keyboard shortcuts you're gonna to come to rely on. Oh, and if you fancy getting really fruity with this kind of thing, I'd recommend checking out Text Expander. I'll link in the description to a recent guide I made for that app. Tip number 10, conveniently, is to follow my top 10 setup tips. If you're hungry for more new Mac setup tips, you can do a lot worse than watch my overview of the first 10 things that I do on every new Mac I buy. Keep watching for a link to that video, but until next time, I'll catch you then.